You don't need a million dollar setup to mix and master with hardware. In fact, a lot can be done using only one or two units. In this video, I'm going to mix a beat and I'm going to use my SSL Fusion and my Warm Audio Bus Comp. And if you stick around all the way to the end, I got a special surprise for you that I think you're gonna love. So let's go. The first thing I'm going to treat is the bass. I want to add a little more grit to the bass. I'll just solo it. Let's start tweaking. Oh yes, it's indeed working. Okay, I'll use the Vintage Drive in conjunction with the Violet EQ with the low end settings there. So let's see how far we can drive it. I got the texture that I wanted. I can start try to blend that in with the original signal. Let's hear what that sounds like. And in the context of the mix. Slightly more prominent bass. I'll stick with that. Let's hit record. So that was it for the bass. I've decided to go for the printed bass track with a little bit of distortion from the fusion. I'll mute the bass track. Additionally, I'll bypass the IO plugin because I don't want that to interfere with anything else that I'm going to do later on in the session. So hide the selector track. It's still there, but it's hidden. Just a small side note, the DAW template pack I use here is included in my free Logic Pro template pack. The link is in the description. And also linked in the description is the free Subphotic Mixing Guide for Producers, where I share with you my 10-step mixing workflow and 15 pro tips that you can implement right away in your production. All in a quick-to-read PDF, bullet point style. Now let's continue. Next up, my main loop. And here I've already armed it with the IO plugin. It's rooted in the stereo because it's a stereo loop. I'll engage it. I want to use both the Fusion and the Warm Audio Bus Comp. So let's start. So we could do with some gentle high passing up until 40 hertz. I found it to sound nice. Let's try out the drive. Let's just see if it works. You saw what I did. I decreased the output volume because I've added some volume turning the density knob. Basically, it's a sort of a distortion algorithm, I guess, that makes everything sound fuller. So with, it sounds a bit fuller and without, it sounds slightly thinner. So I'll go with that. Let's try the EQ. And this, this time I want to try the high shelf. And I'll go a bit extreme and then make the high frequency compressor, which is sort of a de which compresses the high frequencies. I'll let that tame it a bit so it's not too extreme. So this lets me basically do a generous amount of high frequency boost and at the same time compression in the same frequencies that prevents the harshness of the sound. This loop contributes to a large part of the width of the beat, so I'll just try with my width knob. And some beautiful stuff happen when I turn the space knob as well. Okay, and finally, I want to compress it using the Warm Audio Bus Compressor. I want to give it a short attack and a medium release and a ratio of two or three because I don't want it to sound too sharp. I'll start with the threshold way off. Okay, so generous amounts of compression. I wish that this compressor could do faster attack because I really want to hit down on those initial transients because I don't need them. I got transients coming from the kick, from the snare, and it's sufficient amounts of transients coming from uh, other parts of the mix. In the context of the mix, those are actually details, but in the, in the perfect world right now, I would have an 1176, I think. Okay, let's print it.
Okay, I wanted to show you the drum bus. For the drum bus, I also want to use a combination of both my processors. I've set it up here in stereo, then we can start tweaking. I'll start with the fusion and I'll end with the compressor. And for drums, I don't like to compress drums that much. I think they lose a lot of punch so once you start compressing, so I will go easy on the on the bus comp and I will I will compress only for punch so let's listen up So reason why I increase the input trim is because I want the distortion to be more prominent. And the more I drive the input into the distortion section, the, the more distortion or saturation I will get. I will of course compensate turning down the input volume. I clamp down maximum on the threshold when I tweak and then I'm searching for the vibe that I'm after. And I think I've found it, the vibe where the hi-hat is being ducked by the kick and uh, also a bit by the snare. And it comes to shine when the kick and the snare is not active. And of course, I will back down on the threshold and make it more <laughs> presentable. And listen how alive the drums become. Listen, without and with. living breathing organism the drums have become let's record again mute the drum bus mute the io and hide it then i have my drum bus here a lot more punch i'm a lot more grit more prominent more forward sounding more punchy drums as a result of this processing right here i'll hide it and uh that's it i've treated the bass i've treated the main loop and i've treated the drum bus so what i wanted to do now is to finish it off with the mix bus and i wanted to tie it all together now this time i will use both of my processors again let's dig in let's start tweaking Just a short breakdown of what I just did. I drove it up a bit on the vintage drive, a bit more on the density. I felt that it sounded more coherent and uh, sweet with those engaged. I boosted a bit in the lows and the highs on the 30 hertz region. I boosted a bit and I boosted a bit in the 20k area with a high shelf and um, compensated a bit with a high frequency compressor. Only slightly though, everything only slight smiley curve there. And then I experimented with the stereo imager, but I found that to be a bit excessive because I've already treated the main loop with this treatment. So I felt that it was a bit overkill and I'm also a bit afraid of weird artifacts popping up. And then I turned down the output trim as I went along long to make sure that I didn't fool myself by the increase in volume. And then I moved on to the compressor and I started with an extreme threshold. I experimented a bit with the attack. I found the 30 millisecond attack to be best in this case. Sometimes on bus compression, I also used a 10, but this time it sounded best. And I tweaked until I felt that the mix was breathing along with the rhythm. And regularly it's either 1.5 or 2 to 1, the ratio show this one was a two to one definite and the release is often 0.3 milliseconds on the three there but I, I tend to experiment but it's really with the release that I, I felt that and the beat was breathing with the release on 0.3 I felt that the beat was breathing along with the compressor or the compressor made the beat breathe better I think uh, and then I switched to other settings and it went away so 0.3 was definitely the main thing 
And then I experimented with sidechain filter and I found it to sound best when it switched off because here the bass is kind of driving the compression and I like that quality in this context. And then I experimented with the output transformer. It colors the sound a bit and it's just something that you feel and I felt it to be a bit better sounding. So I just left it on. I'm happy with the results. Now I'm going to record this. Let's go. So that's it, mixing a beat using only hardware. And if you like this video, just listen to this. What's the rum dog in ship of Tido Tom Prop? Now truly so mule or ikki trocky than salop. So you hear we have some vocal tracks here, and in the next video, I'm going to mix those vocals together with the beat using only analog hardware processors, the SSL Fusion and the Warm Audio Bus Comp. And if you're still here, I really appreciate it. I don't take it for granted. And let me know which other topics that you would like to have covered in future videos. And also consider subscribing if you like content like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace!